today's video, I'm going to show you a little bit of my setup and give you a little explanation of my experience with firearms. happens to be quite extensive. So anyway, first thing I'm going to show you is I have been involved in a sport since 2011 called three gun. I used to help run a match in just outside of Portland, Oregon for about five years with my friend Marcus. Um, it was at a gun club called Douglas Ridge Rifle Club. I am also an NRA certified CR, or excuse me, RSO, which stands for Range Safety Officer. And in the competition world, I am a level one for six years range officer, which is kind of like the rules official and the person that runs each one of the shooters through the course of fire. So first thing I'm going to do is show you my three gun setup and I'll show you right here. Okay, this is my three gun setup. I have all my ammunition on a belt for reloading the shotgun, and this is what's called two up loading. You load two shells at a time into the tube magazine of the shotgun. And by the way, all the weapons are empty and clear. Uh, I'm not going to show that on camera. I kind of think it's foolish. The people in the gun community that show you that the gun is cleared. By the time you see this video, it's weeks after this has been done. It's absolutely pointless. Uh, I know that they're cleared, but anyway, this is my competition AR. I built this myself. It's designed for shooting up close very quickly. And it also will reach out to around 350 yards. Um, it's got a very, very loud muzzle brake on it. It's got a full length handguard to be able to lock your elbow out to shoot and engage targets very, very quickly. Um, it's, it's a really, really fun gun. Empty magazine. I'm just going to show you real quick what a competition reload looks like. And I'm going to slow this down about 35%. So up, shooting, 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 shooting. I have my reload on my belt. That's slowed down 30%. Same with the shotgun. I'll show you reloads on the shotgun. Shooting, 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 shooting. I bring the gun down, turn it over, grab two, in, two, in, two, in, two, in and then continue to shoot. This is a semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun built for three gun competition by a pro shooter named Jerry Michelek. It's the Mossberg JM Pro 930. It holds eight rounds in the tube, one in the chamber. Um, this is the shorter version of the gun. It has, and I'll bring it up closer to the camera. It has an oversized charging handle, oversized safety, the loading gate has been beveled, and it has a trigger job done to it. Um, this gun shoots, and I also have what are called high-vis turkey sights, as you can see. They pick up the light. They're fiber optic sights. There's little fiber optic rods inside here, and they pick up light makes it extremely fast to acquire targets. Now in three gun competition, we shoot at a variety of paper and steel targets. And what we're doing is we're shooting one person at a time, shooting against the clock, and it's as fast as you can get through and neutralize all the targets is basically the winner and that's how the competition works. Um, 
So I'm going to take off my gun belt or my shotgun belt real quick. So anyway, I also have, I'll come up and show you closer to the camera. I'm going to move these two guns out of the way. So I also have a custom built handgun. This is a Tenfolio match. It's chambered in 40 Smith and Wesson. And this is an Italian made gun. The frame and slide and all the parts are hand fit. I have a custom trigger in it, a $500 trigger in it, and a number of other custom parts. Uh, this thing runs like a fine sewing machine. It has about a two pound trigger pull um, and it is absolutely phenomenal to shoot. It's a heavy gun, it's all steel. It's a man's gun. It weighs almost three pounds. Um, it's extremely accurate and actually very soft shooting. So I also have custom made mags. These start out as Mechgar magazines and I have five shot extensions onto them. So they hold 20 rounds of 40 Smith and Wesson. Same thing, shooting, 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 shooting. When we go to reload, grab, up, grab, up. And what we do in competition, clear, holstered. This is my custom holster setup. This holster setup is made by three different companies. My magazine pouches have cutouts in the front. And the reason why is so that when you grab the magazine, you can index properly. So I just wanted to give you a little idea of my shooting experience with three gun. A lot of people have never seen this type of equipment before. Um, I have used this exact setup in competition hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, I have drawn this pistol from this holster probably close to 20,000 times. I can do it very quickly and very efficiently. I'm very adept at working with the holster and uh, I'm very, very comfortable with it. I will tell you for those of you who are new to guns, uh, part of the reason why I made this is because I was going to give a few words about gun safety because I know that right now we have one of the largest run on guns in the history of the United States. There are more people out buying new guns and brand new shooters than ever before. And the best thing I can tell you is go get some real training. Um, taking a CCW class, concealed carry weapon class, is not going to give you the right amount of safety and skill that you need. Um, honestly, what brought my safety to the next level was shooting in competition and getting my certifications as a range officer and a range safety officer. Um, I am sure that there are probably a number of people that are curious about the guns that I carry with me. I do have my concealed carry license. I've been carrying every single time I leave my home or my RV. I've been carrying since 2012. Um, and I can tell you after a number of years of doing it, it becomes something that you're very comfortable with, but there is no excuse for lack of safety. The number one thing with safety, there's four basic rules of gun safety. Number one, treat all guns as if they're loaded at all times. Number two, muzzle discipline. Do not ever allow this gun to point 
at anything you do not intend to shoot, including yourself. So when you're out shooting your gun at the range, when you're loading it, if you're going to carry one or keep one inside your home or RV for self-protection, don't allow, and I'm going to just give a quick demonstration because once again, I know that this gun is empty. Do not allow yourself to sweep any part of your body with this muzzle. If there was anybody else inside this container with me right now, the gun would be down like this, okay? Actually, more than likely, it would be holstered, okay? There's no excuse for lack of safety. Rule number three, do not put your finger on the trigger or inside of the trigger ring. This is called the trigger ring right here. Do not allow yourself to put your finger on the trigger or inside the trigger ring until you're actually ready to fire a round. That means that if you're walking up to a spot to shoot, you're gonna keep your finger out of the trigger ring and alongside the frame nice and straight. And you're gonna keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. And you're gonna do this so that everybody around you who you're shooting with can see what you're doing. In competition, this is the number one thing I'm looking for when I'm running a shooter through a course of fire. I'm watching their hands, I'm watching their finger. If their finger goes inside the trigger ring at any time other than when they're firing a shot, they are automatically disqualified. Rule number four, know your target and what is beyond it. In other words, if you're shooting, make sure you're shooting into a good and effective backstop. Bullets continue to travel. You don't want them to hit your target and continue to go on and hit something unexpected like a person. That's a big one. That's a big one that a lot of people get wrong. And I will tell you this, there's no such thing as an accident when it comes to firearms. There's only negligence, okay? When people get shot unintentionally with the firearm, it's because somebody broke one of those four rules, okay? I've seen some videos recently on the internet put out by the leader of a group called the Not Fooling Around Coalition. And he said that guns go off all the time by themselves. That is completely inaccurate. There is not a firearm in the world that is in proper working order, and I'm stressing that proper working order, that can ever go off without a human being activating the trigger, okay? Now, if a gun is not functioning properly, it's unsafe. There are guns that are like that that will go off. Don't waste your time owning something like that, okay? Take the time to get trained. Real quick, I'm gonna show you the guns that I carry here on the property. The number one gun that I carry almost all the time Unloaded. This is a Taurus 92. It's modeled after a Beretta 92. The reason why I choose this instead of a Beretta, Berettas have slide mounted safeties that also work as a decocker. It's very easy under stress to accidentally activate that safety and decock the weapon, and then it's on safe. It's easy to do that when you're just racking the slide, okay? The reason why I chose this gun is because it has a frame mounted safety, just like a 1911. Okay, this is what we would call in the style of a 1911 battery of arms. That would be the proper definition. This safety, when on, locks the gun up completely. Trigger and slide. When this gun's cocked, if I push down on this safety, push down right here, it decocks the gun safely, okay? That's decocking the gun safely is meaning that you're lowering the hammer without any chance of it going off, okay? If there are any nomads out there who are looking for a good gun to carry, not just on your person, but in your vehicle for self-protection, I could highly recommend this. It's chambered in nine millimeter. It's easy to shoot. It's a large frame gun. Now I will tell you that this is for the ladies out there. The smaller the gun, the harder it is to shoot accurately, the harder it is to control, 
And the more recoil it's going to have, or kick, the more it's going to hurt your hand. Just because it's small and it looks cute doesn't mean it's something that you should carry. I would recommend always keeping a large frame gun. And the reason why I like this is because there's four conditions we can carry this gun in, okay? Condition one would be no magazine in, nothing in the chamber, okay? Condition two would be magazine in, nothing in the chamber. Condition three would be magazine in, round in the chamber, hammer down, meaning that then it takes a firm 12 and a half pound pull of that trigger to fire that first shot. Then after the first shot fires, because it's double action, the hammer stays back and then it's only a four and a half pound pull to fire a shot, okay? So condition four would be magazine in, round in the chamber, safety on, hammer down. And actually, now that I think about it, there would also be a condition five. Condition five would be magazine in, round in the chamber, hammer back, safety on. This is how you carry a 1911. This is also how you carry this gun, the tank folio, because it's a 1911 style battery of arms. This thing, when it's loaded, is cocked and locked. Round in the chamber, hammer back, safety on. Okay. Now you notice how every time before I put the gun back, I always drop the hammer and I hear myself, I hear it drop. This is how we safe all guns in competition. The range officer makes sure that the shooter pulls the trigger on a dead chamber and then puts their gun away in the holster and then they're not allowed to touch the firearm again. These strict safety rules are why we have had no deaths in the sport of three gun or in the sport of handgun competition that I shoot, which is USPSA, United States Practical Shooting Association. We've had accidents, but no deaths because safety is paramount and is number one. So anyway, this would be a gun I would highly recommend. Do yourself a favor buy 10 round magazines and make that the only thing you carry with you, then you're legal in every single state except New York. And like I said, it's a good gun to carry. I carry it in a Phobos paddle holster. What the paddle means is this paddle right here goes inside your pants and it distributes the weight around a larger part of your leg and it makes it very comfortable. It's locked in by retention. It takes a very firm pull to get this gun out. Because it's legal in this state, which happens to be Arizona, I carry a 20 round magazine in it. I also carry specific self-protection hollow point rounds. And the reason why is not to do more damage to the person that you're shooting. Nine millimeters have a chance of what's called over penetration, okay? If I did have to shoot somebody in self-defense, I wanna make sure that this bullet stays inside that person. So when this hits, it's going to expand rapidly. I don't want it to go through and hit an innocent person on the other side. That's once again, rule number four, know your target and what's beyond it, okay? Also, the reason why it's better to carry self-protection rounds is they have low flash powder in them, okay? Meaning, if you're going to keep a gun around for self-protection and there's a chance you're ever going to use it at night, I highly recommend going to a gun range and shooting that gun at night. You need to know how bright the flash of the gun is gonna be, and I recommend shooting a few rounds with no hearing protection on. You need to know how loud and how violent of an experience it is to your auditory senses, your eyes and your ears. Shooting most factory range ammunition at night is one, 
you're not going to hear anything because your ears are going to be ringing and you will be blind from the flash. It's like looking at the sun. So anyway, now this gun is hot, so I am not going to fool with it very much, but this is my concealed carry gun. I carry this gun in the appendix position right here, just like this. You might be asking why I have an extra magazine. One thing I have learned from competition is that semi-automatic guns can jam. Every single one of them made. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. It doesn't matter if it's a Glock or a Kimber or an STI or an M&P Smith & Wesson. It doesn't matter how clean you have the gun or how many times you fired it at the range. Murphy's Law says under stress, Many things can happen. There's all kinds of ways that guns can malfunction. The number one way I've seen in competition and I've seen this happen hundreds and hundreds of times is the gun will malfunction after the first round and it is usually the magazine that's the culprit. Even if you take the magazine out, clear the gun and put it back in, chances are it's still gonna malfunction. The only way to get that gun back in the fight is to throw that magazine away and grab another fresh one that's not malfunctioning and get it into the gun and get it going. The one last thing I will teach you real quick, it's called tap rack bang. If you happen to be shooting your gun and it malfunctions for any reason, the first immediate action drill, and I've trained myself to do this subconsciously without thinking about it very quickly, tap the magazine, rack the slide, go back to shooting. 99% of the time that will clear any problem. If you have a double feed, you're going to have to remove the magazine. I recommend at racking the slide four or five times. Mag back in, rack the slide, go to town. I've instructed hundreds of new shooters on how to shoot and mainly in a competition environment. Um, I know enough about shooting to, to actually run a professional gun training course. Um, someday I do plan on doing that. Um, there's a lot of things involved with that. The biggest one is that you have to be in one location kind of permanently. And since I move around so much, um, it's really not much of an option for me. Uh, but anyway, that's just a little bit about me. Um, I will put a link to a video of when I won a three gun competition and another video just showing me run through a rifle course. Um, so there, thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe.